Well, she, she had a lot of internal conflict uh, because she did have uh, her, her mother was really destroyed because it was rare, but sometimes uh, the white man would marry the courtroom. That did happen, but it, it was very rare. Uh, Yvette's mother, Jean, was determined that uh, whoever became her sponsor, as he was called, her protector, she was going to get him to marry her. and She was very determined about that, but it, it didn't happen and she was destroyed. And that's, that's the first thing, that what, what this thing did to her mother is what really determined her, that she was not going to do it. Um, but then her mother uh, went off and, and got pregnant by uh, a dark man, and so she had this uh, brown-skinned baby, which the grandmother, I mean, you know, that was really unheard of for a quadroom to have this brown skin baby, but uh, Yvette loved the little baby, and, and the mother did too. The mother was pretty much out of it, and so it was up to uh, Yvette to sort of raise her little brother, and, and she took care of him. And so she had these inner conflicts about who she was and what she was, but it was, it was what this quadroon system had done to her mother, which is what Determined her that she was not going to do it. Right, right. And having the, you know, uh, her mother and her grandmother, they had property from it, so she really didn't need the money because they already had money and property. So there was really no economic need, and so they didn't push it. So she, she just decided not to. But she was in school, and she had these uh, these uh, white girls who were her friends. But that was an incident, and she was wondering if they were her friends because she looked like a white girl, and they could pretend she was white. And this is why this is this is part of her conflict, you know. And so she wears starts wearing this tignon. There were laws. Uh, there were all these laws, you know, so you can know what category everybody. Slaves had to wear badges. And, you know, the quadroons, they had to wear these tignons, mm -hmm. the, uh, these scarves on their head so people wouldn't think they were white. I mean, <laughs> mm -hmm. and uh, and so just she was just t testing her friends, and so she decided to wear it. And uh, they didn't understand, but they didn't care. Right. Um, and that was another thing about New Orleans, you know, that when the Americans came in, um, a lot of them uh, were just businessmen. They, they were coming for economic reasons. Uh, and they, they weren't really concerned about slavery and all of that. And so you had, um, you had these pockets of uh, sort of abolitionist uh, groups, uh, anti-slavery people uh, in New Orleans. Um, and that's one, one of the things I found out is that the, uh, <clears throat> the Underground Railroad, Worked over into Louisiana, right. and uh, I didn't. I didn't know. I didn't know that until I went to New Orleans. Right. That the, the Underground Railroad uh, went that far west, and uh, and that slaves in New Orleans used it to escape, right. and uh, and that there were white people there right. <laughs> uh, who were helping them. And that uh, one of the incidents in the book uh, was actually based on a true incident where. There was this mass escape, and you had these white people that were helping these uh, about a three dozen or so slaves uh, escape, and the whole thing was betrayed by black people. Hmm. So the white people were helping the slaves escape, and the black people. Right. Right. That was that was a real incident. It didn't happen in the time frame, right. Right. but I couldn't let that pass. Hmm. I had to put that in. You brought up an interesting point because basically that's what happened to Yvette. She she identified herself as a color woman, but in the end she actually betrayed her own people. Yeah. And what right. happened to her at the end? Well, uh, there were these uh, group of uh, because you you had wealthy blacks. There were there were two black owned banks in New Orleans at the time, um, and uh, you had. Uh, People from the West Indies who had uh, 
revolted uh, with uh, Toussaint Louverture, I think his name is, the, and, uh, and they had acquired wealth and a lot of them came to New Orleans because, you know, it was French speaking. Right. And so that's where they would come, and they had money, and they had banks, and they, you know, and they were business people, and they took it upon themselves to sort of look after the black community because, of course, the, the police were not really going to be concerned about what went on, and so uh, it was sort of like vigilantes, I have to mm -hmm. say, but they felt that they had to maintain some kind of uh, civility and structure, you know, take care of business among black folk. Right. And uh, when they found out that uh, she had been involved in, in betraying this escape because uh, the slaves were beat, there were two free men who had come down from New Jersey, two free blacks, to help them escape. And the, uh, those two were, were uh, lynched and the slaves were beat, sent back to their masters. And so uh, there was a great deal of uh, anger mm. uh, about it. And, and since, uh, since they knew her, she was, she was beginning to try to pass for white, but they knew who she was. And so uh, they felt that they were going to take care of it. And so uh, her brother, Pierre, was a, a respected member of the business community. And so uh, they told him that they would let him mm -hmm. take care of it. And he decided he would because uh, Yvette had had a daughter and they were mad. They were going to just burn down the house with both of them in there. Mm -hmm. And uh, they gave her brother Henry the option of taking care of it. And so uh, he enlisted uh, Pierre, who was one of the, uh, you know, pretend slaves. Right. And um, because of the relationship between Henry and his sister, mm -hmm. I mean, he really found it difficult to bring himself to do it. Right. And so he got Pierre to, to do it. it. And so uh, he took her out to, uh, he was, he had a set of dueling pistols that he was he was going to shoot her but uh, you know it's a swamp and uh, an alligator mm -hmm. came and got her so he didn't have to shoot her oh. um, and uh, and so he just brought her body back because they you know they recognized an alligator attack mm -hmm. right. Right. and so it was you know she was just killed by an alligator right. and that was the end of it and then, but uh, yeah, they they were uh, they were very angry uh, because you, you're talking about about forty people yeah. uh, who were severely beat and then two were lynched, right. Right. and so uh, they they were determined to, to do something about it. Yvette was such a strong character in this book, but also there are the two uh, protagonists, um, Lucas, who was the runaway slave. Later on, he's changed his name to Pierre, who mm -hmm. became a very um, prospered a businessman in New Orleans. And he joined up with his um, master, the French Count. Um, I believe his name was yes. Matthew, but he changed mm -hmm. it later on to Dujac, Dujac called mm -hmm. um, Talk to us a little bit more about the relationship between black and white in New Orleans at that time. There was... Even though there's there is friction, but there's a cooperative effort for yes. economic growth at that right. time. Because, uh, as I said, there there were several whites in New Orleans who were really not interested in in the, the slavery. It was just uh, it was a boom town during this period. It was the second largest city in the country, second only to New York. Right. And so uh, it was it was really. Uh, for, you know, the industrious Americans, you know, move west, well, uh, I guess New Orleans was west enough for a lot of them. <laughs> uh, and so a lot of them, you know, came, and there was a lot of conflict because you had the, the Creole culture, the French-speaking culture that had been there uh, until very recently. And it was only after uh, Thomas Jefferson bought uh, New Orleans from Napoleon the Louisiana Purchase. Right. 
you know, Jefferson only wanted New Orleans. But Napoleon knew that without New Orleans, the rest of the land meant nothing. And so he sold them the whole thing. Uh, and after that, in, and then in New Orleans sort of immediately becomes a state. And you have all of these uh, Americans now coming in. So you got these two cultures. You have the Creole culture, these French-speaking aristocrats who sit back and let the slaves do all the work. And then you have these industrious Americans coming in. And, you know, by this time, they're beginning to take over. You know, and this, this center of power is shifting because the Americans are industrious and they're building. And uh, there's a lot of political conflict. Um, and so you have these, you have a lot of different people. A lot of them are new. And so you have a situation where... Uh, they, they, you know, they open a, uh, a, a hotel, uh, and there are, this is one of a few places where uh, integrated groups of people were welcome. And so, uh, in, in their particular hotel, in, in their restaurants and places in the hotel, uh, you would have uh, whites and blacks, you know, uh, and there, there weren't a lot of places, but there were places like that in New Orleans. Um, and so, uh, his, he, he became associated with uh, uh, these, you know, more free-thinking people. And uh, one of them turns out to be uh, an abolitionist working mm -hmm. in the Underground Railroad, which uh, turned out to be uh, fortunate for them because they they able to use him to sort of get Pierre's uh, papers, a uh, manumission. Um, he makes these funny papers uh, so, so that he can, <laughs> he can give Pierre his uh, his freedom. Walking paper. Yeah, yes. and because he do, he doesn't really have the, the necessary documentation to right. do that. Right. But uh, since this lawyer is you know an abolitionist, they feel they can trust him. Right. And so uh, he, he draws up the papers, and uh, Pierre eventually, you know, becomes free. Um, and, uh, you know, he, he becomes the owner, of, not the owner, but he runs the hotel because Jacques moves out and goes into politics. Right. And so he's there, eventually winds up there by himself running the hotel. Right. Yeah. Right. So Jacques become, decided to run for uh, political office in New Orleans. In, eight, in early 1800s, you talk a little bit about the history of New, the city of New Orleans when the Americans start come moving in, and the city actually wanted to split up into three different yeah, cities. 